Welcome back to the channel. Well, today I've brought the beast out. It's the first, it's a lovely day. I mean, look at the weather. It's the, back, it's the Easter holiday weekend. So we've got some decent weather and I thought, you know what? I've got, I've got a Honda, I've got some Hondas to review, but I thought, oh, you know, I just want to bring my own bike out. So I, I, <laughs> I wheeled out the Suzuki. It wouldn't start, the battery was flat. So I thought, oh, bollocks. So I'm out on the H2. I thought I'd give the H2 a little bit of a run. And I've just realized it's absolutely filthy. I thought it was clean, but it's dust all over it. I mean, look at the, oh, it's, it's, it's the right state. It's the right state. But I thought we'd come out, have a little bit of a ride. I've got some news. I've got some big plans for this year. So I thought I'd take the H2 out, talk you through my, my plans for 2024 because uh, this is the year I want to really try and push the channel. So we're outside the old boneyard, I thought it was quite appropriate, so we're on the Widowmaker and let's get into it. Chopsy, roll the intro. Here she is, the beast, the weapon, the absolutely crazy, crazy motorcycle that I don't really know why I still own. <laughs> I know why I own it, because they're going up in money, or they seem to be going up in money. That's why I still own it, because this bike is really ridiculous for the road. I mean, just riding here, it was like, oh, this, what, a, what a ridiculous thing. <laughs> it's crazy. Let's fire it up, let's fire it up. Crazy. This hadn't been started since probably, I don't know, November time. Slave to that fella. November time, something like that. Nice bit of gravel. So, fired up on the button, of course, on the button. Ah, <laughs> oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. So the old H2, I think this is, uh, is this the fourth year of ownership? I think this is the fourth, I think 2024 is the fourth year that I've owned this bike for, so, you know, that, that's, that's a long time for me in motorcycles. I don't tend to keep bikes that long. So four years on this bike, four trouble-free years, I have to say from a couple of tiny little things which you can't even really count as, as problems. Had a sticky clutch. I mean, nothing, you know what I mean? Absolutely nothing. I mean, it's only got about 3,000 miles. 4,000 miles? Let's have a look. 4,343 miles. That's not a lot for four years of riding, is it? So I don't use this bike very often. Last year, I had it MOT'd and I did one other ride and that was it, all year. The year before, I dropped it, didn't I? <laughs> and, that, and caused myself some damage on the panels and stuff. So that year wasn't a great year through my own stupidity. But uh, this year, I think what's in store for this bike is just sitting in the garage doing not a lot, if I'm honest. I mean, this thing is just, uh, it's crazy, just, 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 riding here which is about five miles from the house I suppose <laughs> it's just got so much initial pull when you open the throttle so much drive I mean it's a straight four but with that supercharger it gives it so much drive even though this has been mapped the throttle is still very aggressive so you do have to you know it, it, I think they're just all like this, even after mapping and stuff. There's only so much you can do with them. I mean, it, it, so it's an aggressive throttle. It's not snatchy, but you've just got to be very, you know, you've got to feather it. You've got to be very careful with it. <laughs> I mean, it's a proper, a, pr a proper machine, this, you know what I mean? 250 horsepower, this one is at the back wheel. Dino, dino by Chris, CJS Racing, 250 at the back wheel with the baffle in, because this is with the baffle in. I mean, it's ridiculously loud with the baffle in. It's obscenely loud with the baffle out. So I always run it with the baffle in, and I had it tuned with the baffle in. 
because I knew I'd never run it without. Yeah, and, and it's, it's, it's a handful. <laughs> it's a handful. But it's a very special machine, you know? Woo! You've only got to jump on it and you're doing thoroughly illegal speeds. But anyway, I'm not here to talk about the H2 today. What I'm here to talk about is plans for 2024. I've done a couple of launches this year. I went to uh, on the Michelin tyre launch a couple of weeks ago, which was great fun. And Kate was there, Nevesy was there, you know, Johnny Mac was there. All that, all that sort of crew that we've, we were all we all went away on the Super Duty launch. Well, Kate didn't, but Nevesy and Johnny Mac did. And uh, I shared a flight back with Nevesy, and we had a good chat. And after speaking to Kate, she got me all excited about what, what possibilities there are with the channel. And I, I really want to try and uh, you know, make more of a go of it. What's this guy here? You stay there. I want to really make a go of it. I did that uh, ride with Mossy the other week when we went out on the V-Strom and the Tenere. And he wants to get a bit more involved with the channel. And I thought, obviously, Greg did his first solo ride the other day. Greg only works two days a week now on his day job. And he's got to do racing, Alex is racing, but apart from that, you know, he's got more time to, to do reviews, to help out more on the channel. And I thought, well, and chatting to Needs, it needs, he's like, yeah, you could do it, you could do this, you could do that. And I got all excited, I got all excited. And on the way back on the plane, I was making all notes, I'm going to do these tests. You know, we could get a, you know, put some money into the channel. And I was thinking about, you know, maybe do a sabbatical from work, sell this bike to fund a sabbatical from work for 12 months to really try and put everything into going full time on YouTube and you know I thought well, maybe yeah maybe I could get you know, just leave work for three months unpaid or well, six months I doubt I could do six months but try and really make a go of it and I've been reaching out to sort of some bigger sponsors and tire sponsors because what I'd like to do is when we do like a when we do a group test, or maybe do a three-way group test, pay to get a bike celebrity in, you know, maybe like, uh, I don't know, but me, Greg, and Mossy, obviously involved, but he's not really such a, a bike celebrity. But James Hillier's only an hour away up the road. You get James Hillier in to do a test, and you know, if we're doing a test of super naked, we do a track test, we do a road test, you know, so actually invest a bit of money and you know time and editing and up the quality and really try and make something you know a little bit different and, and a little bit special and really try and make a go of it so that's what I'm toying with in my head at the moment is, is doing that and uh, you know like maybe selling this bike just to while I'm trying to build the channel get more revenues in just to live off while I try and make a proper go of it so that's what I'm thinking, and that's what I'm thinking. Or I could just carry on like I am, you know, trying to juggle YouTube with my day job. The day job's getting busy now, so that's, that's becoming more, more and more difficult to do that. And obviously I can't put the time and effort into making videos that I want to. You know, I've got to get a video done, I've got to get it edited quickly, so, so I've got to get on with my work. <laughs> So that, that's my predicament. So what, what are your views, guys? Should, should I take the jump? Do you think the channel has possibly got that potential to, to go to the next level, you know, and be something I could, could do full-time and live off full-time? Unfortunately, my day job is like a, quite a well-paid IT job. So, you know, I'd be turning my back. This is why I'd like to try and take a sabbatical. You know, so I'm not turning my back on a well-paid well paid IT job, and if it all goes pear-shaped, you know, I've got to get another job, and then if I have to get another IT job, I mean, I've been at the place I'm at now for 23 years, if I have to go out and get another IT job, I think I'm going to find it difficult, maybe. And then, of course, I'm going to have to put all of my time and effort into that IT job. I won't better do this balancing act with YouTube. The YouTube will be literally just a... You know, that'll be... Well, that'll be just as and when I can do videos you know it's going to be just the weekends it's, it's it's not going to be the same sort of frequency I'm doing them now and going on the trips I'm doing now so there's a lot of flexibility with my current job I guess that's what I'm trying to what I'm trying to say 
So yeah, that, that's my predicament. I feel like I'm on the peak of maybe being able to push and, and sort of take it to the next level with the right sponsors on board. Like I say, I've been talking to some tyre manufacturers. You know, there's other there's other revenues because the other thing that worries me if, if you're going everything with oh god that, that quick shift is a bit clunky there, isn't it? If you're doing everything with YouTube, you, you know, all your revenue, all your money's coming from YouTube. What if YouTube changed their terms and conditions and what they're going to pay? You know, you know, you, you're screwed basically. So you need other revenue streams through sponsorships and stuff. And I've got some good sponsors, you know, some sponsors which have been with me a long time. The ones I've got, but they're. And they're not, they're not enough to pay my mortgage. Not the price of everything at the moment as well. I wouldn't even pay my food bill. <laughs> For the family. The price of everything. So, yeah, it's difficult. It's difficult. I've never been one to uh, be a massive risk taker. Stay there, people. Ooh. So I've never been a massive risk taker. And you know, this, this is like a little bit of a risk. To do this but I'm I'm 53 this year you know before you, the years go by so quickly before you know I'm going to be 60 and it's like well you, you're too late you know you, you've missed your opportunity to, to do th exciting things well yeah no, I'm not saying you're dead at 60 but I'm, <laughs> you know the uh, your best is definitely behind you when, when you get to 60 isn't it so uh, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. So let me know what you think, guys. Do, should do you think? Because I don't know. I mean, I've got a very one-sided view of what the channel's like. Obviously, being the person behind it, you as an outsider looking in, you know, could you? Would you want to see more content from me? You know, better quality content, guest reviewers, proper proper tests, and there'd still be stuff like this. You know, there'd still be the the same sort of stuff we're doing now but the idea is to bring in some sort of big productions and you know things I'd like to do I'd like to do like um, my project a bit you know let's, let's say a bit like the Grand Tour where you've got £2,000 buy a bike for £2,000 between three people and then you've got to ride it to Scotland you know just, just stuff like that interesting stuff also you know the, the sort of create I used to do a little bit with performance bikes as a contributor and this is what I know, I've been on a few tri trips with Johnny Mack, who's now with Fast Bikes, but if you want crazy ideas, all you've got to do is read previous issues of Performance Bikes, and there's all sorts of crazy test ideas in there, which you could basically lift and turn into sort of cool video-based format, you know? So uh, I've got a lot of, you know, there's a lot of potential there. So what is coming up? Well, there's going to be some uh, group tests going on. Like I say, I'm sort of holding off just to see if I can get these sponsors on board so I can I can invest a bit of money on the tests. You know, maybe do a sort of dyno test as well as part of the of a, of a shootout. So I'm sort of putting off getting any big big tests in the calendar until I know what's going on. But uh, good news is I'm definitely going to be getting a, a Suzuki GX as a long termer probably going to have that for a year or so so if you're interested in that new GX crossover from Suzuki I'm going to have a long term version because I, I did the launch of that of course in Portugal but it wasn't you know, it wasn't a brilliant launch to be honest they didn't really show the bike off to the best of its abilities I don't think the tyres are great the, the surfaces they were on weren't great so I'm looking forward to. Uh, I'm looking for <laughs> blow off valve still on it. Everybody who says, "Oh, what's that horrible noise?" That's the blow off valve. I'm also going to be riding the uh, the Hyper Mono shortly. The Ducati, Ducati have a media day end of next week, and I'm going to be on the Hyper. <laughs> oh dear. Of course. We're going to do an SMCR versus Hyper comparison. Of course we are. That's, that's got to be done, hasn't it? But I can't really use my SMCR for that test because, you know, it's so modified. It's so different to the one you buy in the showroom. Because that's one of the bikes that, you know, with a bit of bit of tuning on those and the airbox, a bit of a freer flowing airbox and exhaust, you can, it transforms those machines with a tune. So it's not really fair to put mine up against the Hyper Mono. So probably have to borrow a stocker 
against the Hypermono and that'll be you know that'll be a really good test that would just be a test me and Greg can do because there's the only two sort of big big ball supermotos you can buy aren't there there's, there's not a third bike we can put in the mix there the M1000XR is also another one I'm really excited about uh, having a test on and that, I think that is going to be from the reviews I've seen from the launch I think that is going to be a little bit special so we're going to have to do a I don't know if Ducati have still got their Pikes Peak they had last year. If they've still got their Pikes Peak, maybe a Pikes Peak versus XR, MXR review. And then of course the Super Duke versus the M1000R, Street Fighter or Tuono. I can't really get on Tuonos now, so Tuono will be a bit tricky, but so that might end up being the Street Fighter. And then we'll bring maybe Mossy in on that one as well. Me, Greg and Mossy. So it all, it all depends really if uh, if I get these sponsors on board, I want to get on board. If we can sort of go to that next level and then, then I'd see about work. Maybe even drop, see if I can drop to three days a week work. It'll be like every weekend's a bank holiday then. <laughs> that would be pretty cool. So yeah, that, that's my plans. Let me know what you think below in the comments, guys. If 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 that if you think I should try it, if you think I should try it, it's like I say, I'd like to be able to say I tried, you know. Even if it all goes wrong, if it all goes wrong, and I end up just burning through the money from this H2 to live on. At least I can say I tried. It didn't work, but I tried. Because if I don't try, and we just carry on like we are, plodding along. Yeah, so I'm not sure what to do. Because I thought I was coming out on the GS6R, and it, and it wouldn't start, of course, bloody thing. It's a Suzuki. Who's ever heard of such a thing as a Suzuki not starting? We ought to call Guinness McWhirt it must be some sort of world record. But because I had that, I haven't got me little looking back at me camera set up, so I have to be a little bit more careful of speed. So I don't want to have to go into blurring out speedos. I've also got a little, uh, I've also got an ND filter. I'm running the Osmo Action 4 at the moment. Because I'm going to be doing a comparison test. DGI contacted me and said, do I want to test? the Osmo Action 4 and do a comparison against the GoPro 12 and I get a few people, you know, uh, camera people contacting me and say do I want to test this, do a review of this camera and it's like well no, well, you know, I'm not doing a video review channel here but when DJI reach out to you with all their power and might, I mean DJI makes some incredible products, <laughs> I'm not just saying that because they sent me this camera but they, they do, they make, you know, the drones, that I use the Osmo Pocket 3 as well now, which is fantastic. They, you know, they're, the, they're the massive, turning into a massive company now, a massive player in that sort of audio-visual world. So when they reach out to you and say, do you want to do a thing, I think you say yes. <laughs> so I'm going to be doing a comparison between this Osmo Pocket and the GoPro Hero 12. I mean, one thing... I will say in the GoPro's favour is the audio on the GoPro is a bit less finicky to get working properly and I think you get a better ambient sound on the GoPro than what you do with the Osmo. You can hear more of the bike. So this is you may not hear too much of the ambient sound on this video. I don't know until I get home and watch it obviously. Check that old bell behind me. <laughs> If I did, they're gone now. It's half the fun, this bike, is all the noises it makes. Kite. So many uh, whistles and chirrups and going on. <laughs> it is something backfiring, so you probably haven't heard that with this uh, camera. 
but it's so visceral, so visceral this motorcycle to ride. It's really, it's special when you come out on it, I have to say. It's a little bit special. I mean, this bike really is, you know, it's not suitable for UK roads, is it? It's, with all the speed cameras, average speed cameras, dash cams people have got. It's just not like it used to be. Having a fast, you know, litre bike on the road is just not like it used to be. Well, having any bike on the road, to be honest, is just not, not like it used to be. So yeah, you've got to be very careful on this. I mean, this is do not pass go, <laughs> go straight to jail. The things you can do on this, the speed you can get up to on this in no time at all. So it's, it's an incredible bike. I, I wouldn't have it if it wasn't sort of appreciating still and uh, let's say with my plans I might end up getting rid of it anyway because I don't really I, w I won't be riding this much this year I'm almost tempted to not even MOT it I might just I might just sawn it and uh, sort of take it off the road if I do keep it so, so if you are interested in this bike I guess I should put that out there if, if you're interested in making me an offer on this machine then uh, yeah, I'm certainly open to perhaps an offer. I'd probably be, I'd want, I guess I'd want around the 25 grand mark, about 25,000, which is what they were when they were new, these bikes. So that sort of shows you, you know, how well the market is going on these. Obviously there's a lot of mods to this. I've got all of the standard stuff as well. I've got all of the standard stuff. So if you wanted to make this bike back to 100% standard, I've got everything. So it's not like, oh, it's modified. Oh, it's not worth as much money modified. You know, I can make this completely standard for you if you wish. Or you can at least have all the standard bits and you can do that yourself. The thing which is nice on a straight forge, you can, like, I mean, fifth gear, at 30 miles an hour, 2,000 revs, you know, and they're, they're completely happy. They're completely happy at those sorts of speeds. And they're, they're very flexible. They're very flexible at straight four. But the, the bad thing about them is, you know, a bit of buzzing sometimes through the bars. And they're a little bit flat at the bottom end. Well, that's why adding a dirty great big supercharger helps. <laughs> because you... You get a decent bit of bottom end back when you're blowing the air in with the supercharger and the fuel. So there's a lot to be said for superchargers on motorcycles. Obviously it adds a lot of weight and all of that. And where am I going with this? I don't know. Got my full leathers on today, got my full RST leathers on. My hazmat suit, as someone said in the comments. <laughs> oh, I must say, I don't know if anyone saw that uh, 44 tooth 44 tooth, 44 teeth video, their Super Duke video, and I was there with Al, Al Maria, and some of the shots of me in my suit, I thought, oh my god, what do I look like? And with it open, it looks absolutely terrible. And someone said, it looks like a hazmat suit, <laughs> and it does, with it, when it's open like that, but yeah, I, I thought, bloody hell, that I look absolutely awful. I've got to sort something out here. So I'm on a bit of a health kick. What's this fella doing? A bit of a health kick at the moment. He paid miserable, wasn't he? Didn't even weigh not nothing. Oh, anyway, so let me know what you think of my plans for this year. And if you think I should do it. Do it! See you there, guys. How have you? Hello mate, how you doing? I got a good first gear on. <laughs> Fist pump. Yeah. Douche.